on the shore of a lagoon in the Peruvian Andes Mountains. 4,000 meters above sea level is one of the birthplaces of the fourth most important crop in the world, the potato. Peru has more than 4,600 varieties of the edible tuber. The starchy food was first domesticated by the forefathers of these Peruvian peasant farmers and the potato's wild ancestors continue to grow in these highlands. Today, they are the guardians of the crop which could alleviate hunger in the face of droughts and other climate disasters. Recognized as one of the centers of origin of the potato, this expanse of nearly 100 square kilometers is a model for traditional Andean agriculture, where different crops are grown at different altitudes. But climate change is upsetting that system and new pests are moving further uphill, forcing crops like the potato to move higher and higher up the mountainside. The Potato Park is dotted with six villages in a beautiful stretch of Cusco's sacred valley. Its residents all work together to maintain ancestral farming practices, passed down from generation to generation since the time of the Incas. It's one of the few places on earth where man still lives in harmony with nature, says resident Aniceto Cayo. El Parque La Papa es una área de conservación, es un patrimonio biocultural indígena donde existe la naturaleza, todo el paisaje. Nuestra convivencia es cómo el hombre vive con la naturaleza con las montañas sagradas, con la madre tierra, con los animales silvestres, con las plantas silvestres. In the higher reaches of the park, these descendants of the Incas grow multiple varieties of potato. In Quechua, the language of the Incas, still spoken by millions in the Andes, this reddish variety is known as Pucusaucirai. Villager Nazario Quispe explains. Aquí estamos cosechando solo todos los papas nativas, porque en el parque la papa bastante nosotros tenemos nuestras variedades de papas nativas 1367 variedades entonces cada familia también según dependiendo de su parcela manejamos hasta 50 variedades 100 variedades dependiendo de su, de su parcela just as Inuits living in the polar north have many words for snow the farmers here have hundreds of descriptive names for potato types. There's one which looks like an alpaca's nose, another shaped like a puma's paw, and even one which is so novelly, trying to peel it makes daughters-in-law cry. That's what its name, Kachun Wachachi, means. Many places and nationalities are associated with the potato, but it was here in the Andes of Peru and Bolivia that the humble spud was first domesticated thousands of years ago. And to this day, a cornucopia of potato varieties continue to grow in all their multicolored and multi-shaped splendor. Some are soaked, freeze-dried, and trampled to remove their skins so they can be used in soups during the winter months. Others are for eating on special occasions, such as baptisms, funerals, and weddings. Here in the rugged heights alongside lagoons which irrigate the valley below, park residents like Ricardina Paco are testing the potato's resilience. Aquí estamos trabajando con 17 variedades uh, de papas nativas, una muestra que estamos haciendo y de los cuales estamos viendo las papas que son más resi resistentes a la helada granizada o Beyond the changing weather conditions, the warming climate has brought pests like the Andean potato weevil. Its grubs burrow into the potatoes, making them uneatable. Controlling them is difficult, as within the park, pesticides are banned. Grazed on by livestock, this area is also where the ancestors of the domesticated potato continue to grow, what the locals call the grandfather or wild relatives. And often the crop grows in the yard, as its seeds are spread by animal dung. 
These practices are fundamental to finding new varieties resistant to climate change. Mientras que los laboratorios and los científicos buscan resolver esto con transferencia de genes y ingeniería genética, ese mismo tipo de trabajo los campesinos acá lo han hecho, lo vienen haciendo por miles de años, porque al mezclar sus cultivos con parientes silvestres se lo buscan con con un objetivo y en concreto hacerlo más resistentes. That fact takes on a new significance as the global climate crisis throws once predictable weather patterns into disarray. The Potato Park has become the greatest living laboratory for this humble but incredible vegetable, says agronomist Alejandro Agumedo, the director of the Andes Association. Este sitio mantiene una de las más altas diversidad, diversidad de papa nativa en el mundo, en constante proceso de evolución. Lo que quiere decir de que al sembrar los campesinos en diferentes alturas, diferentes combinaciones de papa, estas papas están creando nuevas expresiones genéticas que van a ser muy importantes para responder a los desafíos de cambio climático. So despite the fact that this treasure trove of weird and wonderful potatoes is virtually unknown to the world, in a cataclysmic event where humanity was threatened with starvation, these potatoes could help to feed us all. In the last century, according to the Food and Agriculture Organization, around 75% of plant genetic diversity has been lost to the detriment of the world's food supply. With a certain reverence, the park's residents have carefully collected their 1,300 plus varieties storing them here in a chilly on-site seed bank. Villager Mariano Suta explains. In 2017, 650 examples were taken to the Svalbard Global Seed Vault on the Norwegian island inside the Arctic Circle. And in Peru's capital, Lima, the International Potato Center houses more than 4,600 types of potato. It's the world's largest in vitro gene bank. So there is something to celebrate. I just want to congratulate you because these small things can really be game changers in the way we produce potatoes in the future with a climate that is increasingly challenging us. And Peru's Vice President Mercedes Arauz invited foreign dignitaries to celebrate the potato's origins here. As global food security was on the agenda at a symposium in Cusco's Sacred Valley. It was a celebration of potatoes, because beyond their cultural significance and colourful appeal, they could also be crucial for global food security, says Barbara Wells, director of the International Potato Centre. When you look at the genetics that are included in those 4,600 plus varieties that we actually can resource to solve problems not only in Peru but globally. In Africa and Asia, the potato is helping to combat hunger and generate income as a cash crop. China is the biggest grower, accounting for nearly a quarter of global potato production. Mei Zhurong, vice president of the country's Academy of Agricultural Sciences, told CGTN why. China suffers from a, a very severe shortage of land and water. So potato could be a drought resident and also can give you a yield when you have a severe drought. So, and also it's a cash crop. So it's, it's expanded. And the question for, for China is how to enrich the biodiversity during the, uh, uh, when you produce potatoes with potatoes. This is the major challenge. While the potato, like other crops, is impacted by global warming, its genetic diversity could be part of the solution, said the executive director of the Crop Trust, Marie Haga. The basic problem for food security is actually that uh, these crops that feed us 
they are not able to adapt as fast to a climate, to a changing climate as the climate actually is changing. These crops have always adapted. Potatoes are now grown basically all around the world, but you know, it has taken 10,000 years. Now the climate change is so fast, so these poor plants are not able to adapt. And that's why we need the diversity, because the diversity is what we use when we breed plants that can tolerate new climates. Potatoes are on the menu as the delegates dine on a delicious smorgasbord of Andean produce. In the potato park, unsurprisingly, they are the basis for a nutritious diet packed with vitamin C, zinc, iron, proteins and carbohydrates. Potatoes have adapted to almost every ecosystem on Earth. That's why NASA scientists working with the International Potato Center believe they could even be grown on Mars. But it's here on Earth, as ecosystems change, that they may be one of the best hopes for the survival of our species.